Hi everyone, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm a final year medical student at the University of Warwick and this is my interview prep series. Today we're going to be considering the question as to whether or not doctors should be forced or required to help in an emergency even if they're off duty at the time. And this can be quite a difficult one to consider and reason around because doctors alongside nurses, paramedics, other qualified healthcare professionals the gut instinct is to think that we would want them to react if they come across an emergency situation on account of their training, even if they're not on duty or at work at the time. So because of their training, do they have a moral or ethical duty to act? I guess that's what we're asking. And the question is more complicated than it seems. Because on the one hand, most if not all doctors have taken an oath of some kind to do the very best for their fellow humans to use their training to benefit other people. And they have spent a long time in training at great expense to the taxpayer. Remember that medical degrees and medical training is publicly funded for the most part by the NHS itself. And they're trained to deal with this kind of specific acute emergency. So because of these factors to some extent, whether doctors like it or not, they arguably do have an ethical duty to act. However, on the other hand, we don't ask this of everyone in society. It may surprise you, for example, that under English law, there is no so-called duty to rescue that exists in law. If another person is in peril and we come across them, you or I cannot be punished or prosecuted for not going to their aid. So just to reiterate that and give an example, I could come across someone drowning in a lake or something and I could watch them drown and I have no obligation to intervene. And obviously in reality people do usually try to help, that's part of the human condition, we're social creatures, most of us try to do the best that we can for other people and would try to intervene. But the point is, is that I can't be put in prison or taken to court for not doing so. And there are a couple of technical exceptions to this just for your own interest, such as if you create a hazard that someone else is exposed to, you are obliged to try and help them if they are put in danger by that hazard. Or if certain types of relationship exist, for example, a parent with a child, that parent is legally obligated to try and help them and to not do so would amount to neglect. And essentially this all tends to fall under something called the duty of care. If you are in a relationship with someone where you have a duty of care over them, you are actually required to help them in an emergency, but that's not the case for most people in society. So bringing this all back to the question at hand, do doctors, because of their medical qualifications and their training, have a duty of care to other people in society, even if they don't know them? Or indeed when they're not on duty, as it were, when they're not working in a medical capacity at the time? And interestingly, the GMC, the General Medical Council, does offer some quite specific guidance on this particular problem. And they state that a doctor in the UK actually does have an ethical duty to try and help a member of the public who is in danger, even if you are not working as a doctor or on duty at that time. What does this mean in practice for you and me as future doctors? Well, this means that even though it would not be illegal or against the law to not help someone in an emergency, there is actually a professional obligation to act. And it's very possible that because it's then a violation of your professional code of conduct, you're not doing what the GMC requires doctors to do, you could actually lose your medical license. This would be very, very rare, and you might just face a disciplinary hearing or something, but it raises questions. You know, you've taken this oath to help other people, you have the skills and the training to help, why didn't you help? Now it's also really important to remember that just because it's an emergency or an acute setting, the same laws and regulations around doctor's practice apply in these situations, even if you're helping someone when you're not on duty. All the same precautions that you would normally take have to be taken, and any damage that you cause to a patient while trying to help them is still your responsibility, ultimately, because you're not acting as a member of the public, you're acting as a doctor, you're acting in a professional capacity. And this means that patient autonomy, capacity, all the rest of medical ethics that we would normally use still apply. You must still get full consent from the patient where possible, obviously it's an emergency, there are exceptions, we've talked about that before, 
but all the normal rules apply. You must document as well as you can everything that happens and if you're too busy to do that you can ask someone else at the scene to try and do that. And you must explain to the patient again as well as possible all the treatments that you're administering, all the things that you're doing and the likely implications for their outcome as you would normally would do in a medical setting. Now just to help you relax a little bit, doctors are actually protected by Good Samaritan laws when they're acting in an emergency capacity. And these laws aim to protect people who are acting in a medical capacity in an emergency where we understand that everything is not as clear cut and safe as it would normally be. And the reason that these laws exist is to protect bystanders and encourage people to take action. If there's an accident at the roadside and you just have people standing around not doing anything, the person is likely to suffer more than if people do try to help them. But a bystander might be scared to act in case they inadvertently cause some sort of harm in trying to help that person and they don't want to wind up in court. But as far as doctors and medical students go, the most important thing is that people act within their own competencies. You cannot ever act beyond your own competency or beyond your experience and scope of practice, even in an emergency to save a life. You're not protected. That is to say, for example, that if you're on the roadside and someone needs emergency heart surgery or something, it's probably going to be unwise to make this your first go at performing open heart surgery as a junior doctor. And this also means means that if your ability to practice medicine is impaired in any way, such as if you've been drinking alcohol or you're post night shift and excessively tired and likely to make mistakes, it would be inappropriate for you to directly act. And as with any medical situation, if someone there is likely to be more competent, of more use, or is more medically senior to you, you should always usually defer to the most senior person. Because obviously the most medically qualified person should be leading the whole scenario, be leading the team that forms in that situation to try and get the best outcomes for the patient. Patient. And lastly, some final advice that comes from the GMC. They advise that retired or non-registered doctors are able to help in a medical capacity as long as they make that known to the patient, as are medical students, even if you've not yet qualified. And the reality is, right, that your knowledge as a medical student when compared to the average lay person your medical knowledge is likely to be superior and useful in that emergency scenario. And what this means is that if you're first on scene at an emergency, you are the most medically senior member of the team and you need to lead that scenario as much as you are able. And even if that's something as simple as calling for help, instructing anyone who turns up to call an ambulance and doing chest compressions or something, that is a really valuable intervention. And medical students up and down the country do actually save lives. As long as you remain calm, confident, and act within the scope of your practice, you do have the potential to make a real difference in an emergency. And that's where we'll wrap this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out ollieburton.com for my full suite of interview prep videos and more tips and articles besides. Take care and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching guys. If you want to support the channel, there are three main ways you can do it. The first is to hit that like button, share with a friend and subscribe. The second is you can buy me a coffee using my Ko-Fi link in the video description below and help keep me awake during the editing process. The third is you can use my referral link to save 10% off your first year subscription to complete Anatomy 2021 and I'll get a small kickback when you do. Take care and I'll see you next time.